We're going to show the basics of creating walls, but before creating walls, ensure that the current view is open to the proper level. This, in this example, we'll be creating walls on level 1. To create walls, go to the Home tab, and within the Build panel, look for the Wall button. Pick on the text rather than the icon on top to display additional options. Go with the architectural wall by selecting Wall. On the ribbon, you'll now find a green contextual tab alerting you to the fact that the command is currently in progress. Use the items underneath the draw panel to access various creation methods. Choose Line. Next, we'll look at the options bar to decide the height of the wall coming off of level 1. Currently, it is set to height unconnected, which means that the walls will be a constant height given by the value. Picking the drop-down shows other preset levels. If we set the top to level 2, the size of the walls will change dynamically if we decide to change the height of level 2 later on. Next, you'll find Location Line. When you draw the wall, your mouse will display a single line. The location line determines where the wall is drawn relative to the single line. When the wall is set to center line, the total wall thickness is distributed evenly on the left and right sides. There may be also times when the wall needs to be done on interior dimensions of a floor plan. If that's the case, choose either a finished face interior or core face interior. The difference between finished face interior and core face interior will be discussed later. So here's an example of basically the location line set to the finished face interior versus using wall center line. Now the chain option is great when you want to create a series of walls. It allows you to create walls end on end. So as I click to finish one wall, the beginning of the next wall occurs automatically. When this is unchecked, all walls will require two clicks to produce a segment. So in this case I need to go back to the previous endpoint to recreate or start another wall. The offset value allows you to choose how far away from the line you want to draw your wall. So with a positive value, for example at 2 feet, notice how, let me turn chain on, Notice how by drawing these walls, it's drawing it offset from where I'm initially picking. This is great if you ever need to follow against a, an existing object to create essentially an offset item. A negative value will of course go to the other side. Radius allows you to add a rounded corner to the ends of your walls. So here with a radius of one foot, when I draw a 90 degree, it will automatically place an arc in between the two walls. As an alternative to looking at the options bar, we have the properties palette. Here you'll find almost the same options found on the options bar along with some others. The most important item is the type selector. When you create the wall you can actually choose a different type and here we have different thicknesses and also some other walls with multiple layers. The Properties palette also has the ability to change the base offset 
and the top offset of walls. Essentially, if you have your wall sitting on level 1 and you want to basically move it down uh, a few feet or a few inches uh, above or below the constraint, you can do so. And to best demonstrate this, I'll go over to an elevation view and display one of these walls. But first off, I'll have to stop the command that I'm currently in. And I can do so by pressing the modify button, or you can also press the escape key on the keyboard. To delete these walls, I'm going to just do a big selection window and press the delete key on the keyboard. And to get it to an elevation view, I'm going to just double click on one of those triangles that's pointing to the wall. So now here I have one of these walls and you can see here that it's set to a height of 20 feet. That's because the top constraint is unconnected. And here if I change the base offset to a positive value, like 2 feet, notice how the bottom of the wall rises above level 1 by exactly that number. Or I can change it to a negative value and have the wall sit a little bit below the constraint. However, the constraint is still occurring between the wall and the level. You can see that as I'm moving the level up or down. In order to show the top offset, I no longer can use the top constraint unconnected. Otherwise, I'll have to determine how high I want this wall to be using the total height. So changing this to level 2, now the wall is actually right flush against the level line. And here I can also once again type in a positive number to have the wall sitting a little bit above the constraint or below the constraint. You can also use these triangular grips in order to have the same behavior occur. And the offsets are entered into the properties automatically.